In the last video, we looked at discrete random variables and considered a random variable x and the associated probability distribution and probability function. We're now going to look at what we call the cumulative distribution function. And we can write that now as f, and that's a capital F, x, and that's going to be the probability that x is going to be less or equal to x. Let's go ahead and take the example we had before. We flipped a fair coin twice and we let x be the random variable, the number of tails obtained. We saw now the particular values of x was 0, 1 and 2. We looked now at the associated probabilities, the probability that x was equal to x. This was 1 over 4, this was 2 over 4 or 1 half when we simplified it and this is going to be 1 over 4. What we can now do is look at f of x. So f of x, which will come in here, is going to be our next column. This is saying now the probability, if I do f of 0, that the probability of x is 0 or less. Quite clearly, that's going to be 1 quarter. If I do f of 1, it's saying the probability that x is going to be 1 or less. So that's the probability that x is 0, plus the probability that x is 1. So that's then going to be 3 quarters. If we look at f of 2, we can see that that's the probability that x is going to be 2 or less. So that's the probability that x is 0, x is 1, and x is 2. So that's going to be 4 over 4. And of course, when you simplify this, it's going to give 1. So if we take our last value of x, in this particular case, f of 2, this is going to be equal to 1. So when you're drawing out a cumulative distribution function and you're showing that these values, this last value must be equal to 1. So let's look at some examples of this. We might want to find out f of 1. Let's find the f of 1. The f of 1, we simply come to here, and this is saying the probability now that x is 1 or less. That's going to be 3 quarters. Again, you would simplify here, you'd write 1. The reason I'm doing this is to simply show now that these all add to give 1, in the same way now that we can see that these are all going to add to give 1. If we just consider f of 1, this is saying now the probability, and we'll just put this in the alternative notation, probability that x is 0 plus now the probability that x is going to be equal to 1. So all I'm doing is summing these two probabilities. We might be asked, for example, to find the probability, or f in fact, of 1.7. This is simply saying now that this is going to be f of 1. These now are discrete numbers, so it can only take discrete values, 0, 1 or 2. So if we're looking at the probability of now x being less or equal to 1.7, that's the same now, same the probability of x being equal or less than 1, and we would simply use this again to say that's 3 quarters. It can't take 1.7, so we consider integer values in this particular case that are going to be 1 or less. Let's look at another example. We might be given a probability distribution. So let's draw up a probability distribution. We might have uh, some certain values of x, and let's put a third column on here. Let's just put x in. So let's say we've got x, and we will let x be 3, 5, let's go for 6, let's go for 8, let's go for 9. So our probability distribution, the probability that x is equal to x, let's assign some probabilities, let's say 0.1, uh, 0 0.2, let's say now 0 0.1, let's say 0 0.5, and let's say A. And what we want now is to fill out the column F of X. So this is the cumulative distribution. So let's look at the first thing we know. We know now that the sum of the probability of X being equal to X is always going to be 1. So if we look at this now, we can work out the value of A. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.5 plus a will be equal to 1. So that gives me now 0 0.9. So let's check that out. I've got 0 0.9 plus a is equal to 1. So we can see a is going to be 0 0.1. So a right here, and I'll just put it just here, is 0 0.1. So let's go ahead now and look at the cumulative distribution. 0 0.1. So this is a probability that x is going to be 3 or less. Quite clearly, that's just a probability that x is 3. 5 or less, so if we did f of 5, that's going to be 0 0.3, because it's now p of 3 plus p of 5. If we look to f of 6, that's a probability that x is 6 or less. That'll be 0 0.4. Then we'll have 0 0.9. And then we'll have 1. And we can say quite clearly from here, f of 9 is going to be equal to 1. 
That's something we know. The last value in our table will give us now a value of 1. So f of 9 is going to be 1. We might want to find something else. Let's say we wanted to find now, let's say we were looking at the f of 6. Let's look at f of 6. Well, we can see from here the probability now that x is 6 or less is going to give us 0 0.4. So this is now constructing a cumulative distribution from a probability distribution. We could, of course, flip this round. Let's go the other way. So let's draw something out. Let's go ahead and we will have now, let's do a cumulative distribution. In later videos, we will look at some exam style questions. Hopefully this is just building some basic skills for you. So what we'll have then, let's take X and let's say we got four, let's say we got seven, let's say we got nine, and let's say we got 11. What we might do is have f of 4 to be 0 0.3, 0 0.7, f of, uh, f of 7 is 0 0.4, f of 9 will have a 0 0.9, and then quite clearly f of 11 is going to be 1, if x can only take these values. So let's look at the probability distribution. So probability that x is going to be equal to x. Now here, what we can do is quite clearly see the probability that x is going to be 4 is 0 0.3. But if I want now the probability of x being equal now to 7, if we consider this is going to be f of 7 minus f of 4. That's a formal way of looking at it. All we're doing is simply subtracting 0 0.3 from 0 0.4, which will give me 0 0.1. 0 0.9, take 0 0.4, 0 0.5. 1, take 0 0.9 is 0 0.1. And we can see that this is just going to sum to give 1. So again, we can say the probability that x is equal to x when summed will give us the value of 1. And you can see that straight away. So again, from this, you might be asked to find now the probability that x is equal to 9. And then we can simply read that off now, and that's going to be 0 0.5. Again, some exam questions will get slightly more tricky, but that's a nice straightforward example of taking a cumulative distribution and looking now at the probability distribution. OK, let's do something slightly more challenging. Let's say we've got now a cumulative distribution and we will say that's f of x. So let's say this is going to be, let's go for, uh, let's say x plus k over 6. Uh, we will let x be equal now. So let's x be equal to, let's go for 1, 2, 3 and 4. OK, straight off, you might be asked to find now the value of k. This is fairly straightforward because all we'd need to do is sub this in. So what we could say straight off is now f of 4 is going to be equal to 1. So if we sub 4 in here, what we're going to get is 4 plus k over 6 will be equal to 1. So 4 plus k will be equal to 6, subtracting the 4, k is 2. So we could go ahead and do that. Alternatively, we might just want to now draw the cumulative distribution. So we've got now our cumulative distribution, which you can put in here, and then we can look at the associated probabilities. So let's take x. We'll have now 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's now look at f of x. And I'll just, I'll just pretend that I haven't done this to begin with. Let's just sub these in. So what we've got then is now we've got x plus k. So this is going to give me now 1 plus k over 6. Then we're going to have 2 plus k over 6, 3 plus k over 6, and then we're going to have 4 plus k over 6. Now, we already know what these are, so let's just write this out, and we'll just sub that in. So what we've got then, k is 2. So this is going to be 3 over 6, or when simplified, 1 half. Then I'm going to have now 4 over 6, 5 over 6, and then 6 over 6, which gives me now the 1. And again, in the exam, you'd write 1 half, 2 thirds, 5 over 6, and then 1. What we could now do if we wanted, or we could have done it earlier, we can draw now the probability distribution function from this or write it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we've got then is a probability distribution. So let's look at this here. Probability now that x is equal to x. So we can see now the probability that x is going to be equal to 1 is going to be 1 half. Now, I want the probability that x is going to be equal to 2. So all I'm doing is subtracting 1 half from 2 thirds. And seeing it this way is a lot easier. So 4 sixes minus 3 sixes is 1 six. Probability that x is 3. We've got now 5 six minus 4 six, which is going to be 1 six. And then finally, probability that x is 4 is 6 six minus 5 six, which is 1 six. 
And again, you can see now that the sum of the probability of x being equal to x is going to be 1. If we sum those up, that's what we get. So again, you might be asked to find certain values from here. They might say, find the value of k, find f now of 2, well, f of 2 is right here, so we got 2 thirds. They might ask now for the probability that x is going to be equal to 4, then we'd sub that value in. So we've got all of these, and there are different ways about, uh, about going there. So if they just ask you to find the value of k, you would rely on the fact that f of 4 is 1, and you would solve. So there we go, a brief introduction to the cumulative distribution function. In later videos, we'll look at some more challenging problems, but hopefully you can understand what this means. It's simply now saying the probability of x is going to be at less or equal to the observed values. So if we did the f of 1, it's the probability that x is 1 or less. f of 2, the probability that x is 2 or less. f of 3, the probability that x is 3 or less. And so on and so forth. So in the next video, we will go on to look at some more work with discrete random variables. But hopefully that's been a good intro to the cumulative distribution.